So in chapter four, question 14, they're asking you what the group number is, that's the column number, and then the number of valence electrons for a bunch of different elements. Let's talk about what valence electrons are for a second. If you compare an atom to the solar system, every atom would have a nucleus that would be like the sun, where the protons and the neutrons are. And around that fly electrons, sort of like the planets around the sun. And they fly in sort of layers. Now, the outermost layer, the outermost layer, so this one I just drew here, that is the layer that bumps into stuff in the outside world. And so that's the layer that determines whether the atom sticks to stuff in the outside world. And because it determines whether the atom sticks to stuff, or you could also say reacts with other stuff, because it's so important in determining that, it has a, a special name, and the name is the valence layer. Now, any electrons flying in that layer are going to be called valence electrons. It so happens that the number of valence electrons in an atom is the same as the group A number, so the column number that it's in in group A. Okay, so let's try to figure out the group number and the valence electrons for a few elements. First, magnesium. Magnesium is on the left side of the periodic table. It's in group 2A, so the group number will be 2A. Whatever the group A number is, that's how many valence electrons are going to be around magnesium. So you can sort of think of magnesium as having two sort of valence electrons that are around it. And what those electrons are like, you could sort of think of them as like the bumps or the indents on a Lego. Like the bumps allow the Legos to stick to other Legos, and that's what these valence electrons are doing. They're allowing magnesium to stick to other atoms. How about iodine? Iodine is on the sort of bottom right of the periodic table. It's in group 7A. And so how many valence electrons does it have? The number of valence electrons is the same as the group A number that it's in. So it has seven valence electrons. And that means that an iodine atom would sort of have seven, uh, seven bumps on it. And that's, that would determine how it can connect to other Legos with other bumps or indentations. How about oxygen? And this is solid oxygen in the photo. Oxygen is sort of at the top right, and you can see that it's in group 6A, so the group number would be 6A. How many valence electrons around an oxygen atom? Six. It's the same number as the group A number. And those valence electrons are going to determine whether oxygen can stick to other stuff or not. Phosphorus. Phosphorus is sort of on the right side at the top. It's in group 5A, so the group number is going to be 5A. How many valence electrons? The number of valence electrons is the same as the group number, so there's going to be 5 around a phosphorus atom. So you would have sort of 5 electrons on the outside of that phosphorus atom, uh, determining how the phosphorus can stick to or react with stuff. How about tin? Tin has a symbol Sn, sort of at the bottom right, and it's in group 4a, so the group A number would be 4a. The number in the group A number is the number of valence electrons on the outside of a tin atom. So here, tin would have 4 valence electrons. How about boron? Boron. Boron is sort of in the middle at the top. Um, boron is in group 3a. So that's its group number. And how many valence electrons will it have? It will have three. It's the same as the group A number. So a boron atom would have three sort of bumps on the top of it. A boron Lego would have three bumps that would let it connect with other elements or other atoms or Legos. Chapter 4, question 15 is the same sort of thing. They're asking you for the group number and the number of valence electrons for a bunch of different elements. So first, potassium. Potassium, the symbol for potassium is K. It's on the left side of the periodic table in group 1A. So the group number here would be 1A. And how many valence electrons are in potassium? The same as the group number, so it would have one valence electron. Potassium would have this one dot. That dot is symbolizing the electron, an electron in the outermost layer, the outermost layer of a potassium atom. How about silicon? Silicon is sort of on the right side of the periodic table. It's in group 4a, so the group number is 4a. 
And how many valence electrons would it have? Four. Notice that was the same number as tin. And it's because both silicon and tin have the same number of valence electrons, the same sort of bumps on the top of the Lego that they are, that they behave in a similar way or react in a similar way with other stuff in the world. Um, and so things that tin would tend to react with or stick to, silicon would as well. Um, and so you can see how these the number of valence electrons, which can so conveniently be gotten from the group member, could give you a lot of information about the properties an element has and that it shares with other things in the same column or group. How about neon? Neon is at the top right of the periodic table. It's in group 8A. So the group number would be 8A. How many valence electrons? The same as the group, eight, the group A number. So this neon would have eight valence electrons. How about aluminum? Aluminum is sort of at the top middle and it's in group 3A. So the group number would be 3A. And the number of valence electrons around any aluminum atom would be three. It would have three valence electrons, kind of like boron. And so it would share similar properties to boron. It would react or stick to different, to similar things as boron does. How about barium? Barium is at the bottom left of the periodic table. It's in group 2A. So group 2A, that's the group number. What's the number of valence electrons? The same as the group A number, so two. Bromine, bromine is at the far right of the periodic table. And so it's in group 7A, that's the group number. And the number of valence electrons would be the same as the group A number. So bromine would have sort of four, or I'm sorry, seven bumps on the outside of it that would determine how it sticks to other Legos in the world.